The Guardians back in town tonight and still sitting atop the American League Central coming off a day of rest before taking on the Twins tonight. Yeah, big weekend series at Progressive. More than a century ago, another Cleveland baseball roster captured the hearts of all Cleveland baseball fans in a year defined by triumph in the face of tragedy. This is all part of a book that's coming out soon about the team's star shortstop at the time, a man affectionately known as Chappie. Here's Leon Bibb. In Major League Baseball, the game is played with a ball clean and white, free of cracks and blemishes. If it hits the ground, a new one is tossed in, but it has not always been that way. Many decades ago, a Major League Baseball could be ragged, scarred, and downright grimy. It was that description of a baseball which led to the only Major League's death as a direct result of the game, and it involved a Cleveland baseballer. More on that in a moment. But first, meet Scott Longert, a Cleveland baseball historian in love with the game. And you can kind of sense the presence of uh, you know, the guys that were here. Bill Wambi was, was right there. Ray Chapman was uh -huh. there. The story which consumes him is that of Cleveland Indians player Ray Chapman. Two balls, two strikes. It was 1920, and Cleveland was playing the Yankees in New York. Facing Chapman at bat, Yankee pitcher Carl Mays was on the mound. He didn't like the ball he held. The ball was wet in addition to being dirty because it was drizzling and it kept on the ground, on the grass. But Mays did not get a new ball. There was a, a decree that went to the umpires, don't throw out a game ball unless you absolutely have to. In 1920, team owners complained baseballs cost too much, so they ordered no more than eight balls a game. Denied a clean ball, Mays went into his wind-up with an old, dirty ball, scarred and with ragged stitches. The skies had darkened. Rain began to drizzle in, lessening visibility of the batter to see a dirty ball. Cleveland star shortstop faced the oncoming pitch. Mays threw a fastball inside to move Chapman away, but the ball kept coming in. It kept breaking because of what the shape of the ball, and Ray never saw it. Chapman went down. He was rushed to a hospital where doctors performed surgery on his fractured skull, but could not save the Clevelander who died a few hours later. He was 29. Chapman's death stunned the sports world, especially Cleveland, where charismatic Chapman and wife Katie were the darlings of Cleveland society. They were the power couple of Cleveland. Here, our story takes an interesting and intriguing turn. We're at Cleveland's Lakeview Cemetery, where the body of Ray Chapman is buried. Since 1920, items of baseball have mysteriously appeared at the gravesite. Rarely is anyone seen placing an item here, but they're all placed here in tribute to the man who died as a direct result of the game. Decades after Chapman's tragedy, batting helmets enter the game. Batted balls are always replaced with clean new balls to be better seen by batters as opposed to the dirty, ragged ones, like the sphere Cleveland Indians Ray Chapman did not see coming. For 3 News, I'm Leon Bibb. Wow. Yeah, Leon, thanks. Uh, what a tremendous job telling that story. Scott Longert's new book called Love and Lost, The Short Life of Ray Chapman, comes out this July. He's also the author of numerous books on Cleveland baseball history, a real Cleveland baseball historian. The team would, of course, go on to win the World Series later that year, one of two World Series won by the Cleveland Indians. Uh, in photos, the players are seen wearing black armbands to remember their fallen teammate Ray Chapman. Wow. Yeah, what a story. And the way that he made a mark and changed, you know, as Leon was telling his story and you were giving me more background, the way that he changed the future of baseball as we know it today is incredible. Yeah, well, with the batting helmets, which did come sometime later, mm. but also the clean baseball. Um, yeah. Uh, to, to think that Major League Baseball has come that far where once upon a time there was an edict that uh, umpires should play, use no more than eight game balls during the course of a nine-inning game. Today, it's not uncommon for them to go through 50, 60 baseballs for a nine-inning game. Wow, that's something. What a story by Leon. Thank you for that.